Sulfuric acid is used in the manufacture of detergents, fertilizers, paper, paints, among others. However, in this video, we are going to look at how we can manufacture sulfuric acid at industrial level through the contact process. When you look at the amount of sulfuric acid that is consumed by any country, usually this is in tons, it's usually a measure of the level of industrialization of that country. What does this mean? It means that if the economy is thriving, then the industry needs huge quantities of the acid. We are going to use mainly three raw materials, sulfur, air, and water. The sulfide ores can also come into place if at all the sulfur is not present. And we are going to follow a few processes as shown in the following stages. In stage one, we shall look at the production of sulfur dioxide. Stage two, we shall oxidize our sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. Then we shall produce our oleum. And lastly, we shall dilute our oleum to produce our sulfuric acid. Let's look at stage one. In stage one, we want to produce sulfur dioxide. However, to do so, we need to burn sulfur, or if at all we are using the ores, we shall burn the sulfur containing ores, such as iron pyrite, zinc blend, galena, so that we can produce our sulfur dioxide. So that means initially we have our sulfur in solid state. All we have to do is to first convert it in liquid state so that it can then react with our oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. So the first step will be burning our sulfur from the fresh process in air. If at all you are to remember the extraction of sulfur through this fresh process, we can obtain sulfur. So we shall burn our sulfur in air. Usually this air has to first be dried, at least by passing it through concentrated sulfuric acid. We can also try to purify it by passing it through filters to remove at least some dust particles. So if you look at the equations possible on this first stage of production of sulfur dioxide, we shall burn our, we shall get our burning sulfur to react with our oxygen, which is part of the air to form sulfur dioxide. This is out. This gas was for our oxygen. So we have sulfur in liquid state reacting with oxygen gas to form sulfur dioxide. If at all we are not using sulfur as our raw material, we shall also burn or roast the corresponding sulfide ores in air and we shall obtain the corresponding oxides of the metals and sulfur dioxide. However, this step here is generally exothermic and quite a significant amount of heat is actually evolved. This heat can be used to run other parts of the plant, like maybe heating the steam instead of just letting it go to waste. The excess energy can also be used maybe to supply nearby homes, so that can be used for heating. That means the amount of heat that is given off is quite significant. So the first process, we shall burn our sulfur in oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. The second stage is quite the challenging one where we have some, mod some modifications made. We shall basically need to produce sulfur trioxide. However, in this case, we are going to further mix our sulfur dioxide with air. However, to do so, we have to ensure that the air is quite purified, free from dust as before and also it has to be dried so that when we are sure that our sulfur is our sulfur dioxide is actually reacting with the oxygen component of this air so if you have to look at this reaction we shall have our sulfur dioxide which is a gas it will react with the oxygen gas to produce sulfur trioxide now this reaction is two-way. It means that the reactants, sulfur dioxide and oxygen, can combine to form 
sulfur trioxide. However, this can also break down in the backward reaction to produce the reactants. So something has to be done to ensure that we are actually obtaining the forward reaction alone or at least at a larger extent. So we have to modify this kind of reaction so that we can produce significant amounts of sulfur trioxide. So how is that done? By playing around with catalysts and the temperature ranges. As we can see that this reaction is actually favored by Okay, we need to first balance it. Here we shall put a half so that it will be balanced. So we have a 2 and a 2. As you can see, if you to look at the number of mole ratios, 2 to 1. So here we have 3, while this side we have 2. It is favored by an increase in pressure because we have a decrease in volume. At the same time, because it's also exothermic, it will be favored by low temperatures. However, whenever we are producing sulfur trioxide or in any power plant, we don't want to lower temperatures because it's not economical. And as such, we bring in the issue of our catalyst, whereby we can somehow raise the temperature and at the same time obtain our sulfur trioxide. So let's go back to our equation and have a look. So we shall use vanadium 5 oxide as our catalyst in this case and temperature ranges of 450 to 500 degrees Celsius. So these two conditions help us to ensure that we are obtaining a forward reaction to produce sulfur trioxide instead of increasing pressure and reducing the temperature at least with these two, the catalyst and the temperature range, we can produce quite enough amount of sulfur trioxide. However, this reaction is also exothermic and the heat can be used to do other things. So the reaction is exothermic and the temperature can raise up to 600 degrees Celsius. And because of the use of the catalyst, we can be able to obtain at least 90% yield of sulfur trioxide. However, in case we don't have vanadium-5, we can use platinum. It's also a good catalyst. The only downside of it is that it can easily be poisoned due to impurities as well as it being quite expensive. As such, we normally stick to our vanadium-5 oxide. Okay, I think I don't have vanadium-5 written somewhere. Okay, it's here. Vanadium-5 oxide. So this is all about stage 2. Usually this is a two-way arrow, if at all, depending on how you could prefer to write it, you can write it as a two-way reaction because it can undergo equilibrium. Then we go to the third stage. Okay, we still have something here to note. Once the reaction has begun, the heat released is used to maintain the operating temperatures, meaning it can be used to perform other functions instead of letting it to go to waste. Now, note that any sulfur dioxide that may not be converted to sulfur trioxide, remember we said 98% of sulfur trioxide is formed, that means there is that 2% that has not been converted. This should not be allowed to escape into the atmosphere as this would cause pollution. Remember, this dioxide here is quite acidic and may cause local acidic rains. So, how can we avoid such pollution? What do you suggest or what do you think could be done? Obviously, we have to ensure that the chimneys that we are using, at least we, we fit them with acid scrubbers. This is a way of preventing pollution. So at least when we put these acid scrubbers in our chimneys, at least we can use things like calcium hydroxide. These ones can react with our sulfur dioxide from our salt and, and water. As such, we can somehow protect our environment from these dangerous gases. Then we have stage 3, production of oleum. Now, oleum is like concentrated sulfuric acid. This is concentrated sulfuric acid. So, once the cooled gases have been passed through the absorption tower, we shall not look at this detail. 
we tend to to form oleum when we directly dissolve our sulfur trioxide in sulfuric acid. The key question is where do we get the initial sulfuric acid? At least we are born in this age where sulfuric acid is already present so that isn't a challenge. You already have it. Remember sulfuric acid, actually when you look at our sulfur trioxide, if we directly dissolve it in water, we can form sulfuric acid. However, this reaction is highly exothermic and it will tend to form sulfuric acid fumes or kind of like mist. So it's not advisable to directly dissolve our sulfur trioxide in water because this reaction is not that friendly. The outcome may not be good enough. And as such, what we do, we dissolve our sulfur trioxide in sulfuric acid first and then we form a very thick liquid known as oleum. So this is our oleum or you can call it disulfuric acid. Disulfuric acid. Basically it is a concentrated version of sulfuric acid. So this oleum is what we shall then use to produce our sulfuric acid. So on stage 3 we produce oleum by dissolving the trioxide gas in our sulfuric acid. When you want to form at least the chemical formula of oleum, basically you'll just add whatever we have on the left hand side. For example, we have our sulfuric acid together with our sulfur trioxide. So you'll find that you have two hydrogen atoms, two sulfur atoms, and then seven oxygen atom. So this is our oleum. So sulfur trioxide is not directly dissolved in water to form sulfuric acid because if dissolved in water directly the reaction will produce a lot of heat which is highly exothermic. The heat produced boils the acid forming mist of tiny droplets of acid sprays which are dangerous. So obviously if you inhale such, it's not quite good because obviously something acidic into the lungs could be lethal. So that's stage 3, production of oleum. Then we have stage 4, the last stage where we have to dilute our oleum to form sulfuric acid. Obviously in most cases dilution, it means adding water. So in stage 3, we shall carefully mix our oleum with calculated quantity of water. We don't just mix for the sake. We have to calculate, know which, which concentration of oleum we have, which amount, and what's the right proportion of water to mix with our oleum. So once these two are mixed, we shall get our sulfuric acid. At least it can be 98% pure. When you look at the summary, of this industrial preparation of sulfuric acid, the first stage we had our molten sulfur and then we, shall, we passed it or we mixed it with dry air which contained our oxygen in a furnace so that the two can react. That is to so say we are burning liquid sulfur in dry air. So here we are having this reaction taking place, sulfur with oxygen to form our sulfur dioxide. Then we had to ensure that at least when this is good, obviously both the sulfur dioxide that has not reacted and the oxygen can proceed, but we also have the sulfur dioxide moving forward. At this stage we have produced sulfur dioxide. Now it will go to the catalytic chamber where we have our vanadium 5 oxide as the catalyst, usually these are cylindrical and as the reactants come into contact with the catalyst it tends to aid the reaction between sulfur dioxide and oxygen. So at this point here we have our catalyst, the sulfur dioxide will react with more oxygen to form our sulfur trioxide. Then after that we shall take our sulfur trioxide and then we shall spray some concentrated sulfuric acid onto the sulfur 
trioxide. Now this is the third stage where we had our sulfur trioxide with our sulfuric acid. Usually we use acid sprays, acid sprays so that we can dissolve our trioxide into our sulfuric acid to form our oleum. This reaction is also highly exothermic, that's why the sprays are used. Then later on we shall produce our oleum in which we shall now bring our calculated amount of water to come and interact with our oleum to later produce sulfuric acid. Please you can pause the video and try to go through this diagram to see whether it is somehow making some sense. Then lastly as a bonus we have some physical properties of sulfuric acid also known as sulfuric 6 acid. So this is an oil and it's a colorless liquid. It has a density of 1.83 grams per cubic centimeters meaning it's denser than our water. It's a non-volatile acid that means it can't easily escape or it can't easily turn into vapor probably due to, due to its density and it also has a boiling point of 338 degrees Celsius and can freeze at 10 degrees Celsius. So we have one question for you. Feel free to let me know in the comment section whether you have an answer as to why the process is called contact. Why do we call it contact process? You might have heard of Haber process. That's all I had for you today. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe so that you are always notified whenever I upload new content. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.